Anytime you purchase a legacy locomotive, in the package you receive an orange memory module. This memory module contains all of the data we just walked through manually. On the front end of the legacy module, here, it displays what it is for. This particular module is for a Vision Line Union Pacific Challenger cab number 3976. So, using the same process previously, we want to select engine 76. Assuming, of course, you've numbered your legacy Challenger 76 in accordance with the last two digits of the cab number. To insert the module, it's, it's quite simple. Simply press the info key in the upper right hand corner to get to your engine menu screen. You'll notice there's an icon here for load. Press this button and it tells you to insert the memory module. The module gets inserted in the, under the rubber cover at the top of the remote with the sur silver circle L facing outward, facing upwards. You'll notice that after you insert the module, the remote will tell you what it is. It tells me that the module is inserted, it tells me it's Union Pacific 3976, the product SKU, what it is, a challenger, and it asks me if I want to load the engine data. In this instance, I do. So I, I press the button under yes. It tells me that the engine data is loaded. All I need to do to continue is remove the module. Modules removed, comes back to my engine menu screen. At this point, everything I need in my remote for my legacy Challenger is loaded. It tells me that my type is a steam. I can see that by pressing the scroll button. Type is steam. Pressing scroll again. It's already established my control as Lionel Legacy. Again, that's important because it will broadcast a 9-bit digital signal to that legacy locomotive to operate all of its available features. And pressing scroll again, I can see that the sounds are set up for legacy rail sounds. To exit this menu, I simply press info. And as you can see on the screen, it comes up and tells me I have a UP Challenger number 3976 under the icon or under the address of engine 76 again we'll press it again for clarity engine 76 you can see the cab number pops on the screen for just a few seconds and now everything that I need to gain all the features out of my legacy remote are loaded into it because we've selected the control type as legacy and told the remote that our type is steam, it will load the proper icons on the touch screen for specific to our legacy challenger. To see those icons, all I need to do is press the aux one key. I've already addressed engine 76 by pressing engine 76 and when I touch aux one, my touchpad changes. I now have icons on my touchpad that are specific to a steam locomotive. I've got volume up, tower calm, steam let off, volume down, shutdown sounds, steam blow down, tower calm, smoke off, smoke on, engine reset, rule 17 lighting on, rule 17 lighting off. By pressing the vertical speed bar, I can change my menu options because the remote knows that I'm addressing a legacy equipped locomotive with legacy rail sounds. So by pressing the speed bar, my menu on the touchpad changes. With this menu, I now have the following options. Restricted speed, slow speed, medium speed, limited speed, normal speed, high ball, still have access to tower calm, smoke off, smoke on. This box right here directly relates to the effects of this steam cylinder chuff laboring. As I press the EFX or FX button up, this bar raises. As I press the FX button down, 
it lowers. Number one is roll speed. That's the first speed step available on all legacy equipped locomotives. To toggle back and forth between the railroad speed step uh, menu screen and the auxiliary sound menu screen, all you need to do is either press AUX1 or press the speed bar that we showed you earlier. Pressing the speed bar time and time again will toggle between the two menus. Now you can get a feel for what menu options are available based upon the type of locomotive you tell the remote that that specific engine number is and the control type. I'd like to point out to you that if you select no sounds on the locomotive, no auxiliary sound displays will appear. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and go into the engine menu by pressing info. We're going to scroll all the way over to sound. And we're going to choose no sound. We're going to exit the menu by pressing info. And now when we press the AUX1 key, no menu items appear. The icons do not change. That's because the remote thinks the locomotive on the track has no sounds. Therefore, you need no icons to activate them. To change this back, we simply press info, scroll over to the sound tab, choose LRS for legacy rail sounds. You'll notice our control type has been reset to TMCC. So we need to scroll over to the control screen, select legacy, because 76 is our vision line challenger, and leave the menu by pressing info. It's important to note that there are several different type options for various different locomotives. I'd like to take a few moments and show you what these options are. We're going to go ahead and press info to get into the engine menu and we want to look specifically at type. So to get to type we press scroll one time and we have several options that appear. Providing the software loaded on your remote is version 1.3, you have the following options for your type in your locomotives. We have diesel for a diesel road locomotive, steam for a steam road locomotive, DSW for diesel switcher. This is a locomotive such as an S2 switcher or anything uh, of the switcher variety. SSW for steam switcher. An example of a steam switcher would be a Pennsylvania CC2S or an 080 locomotive. We press the button under the down arrow key to expand our options. We have ELC for electrics such as GG1s or E33s. SUB for subways. Those are pretty obvious. LPD for legacy Pullmore diesel. LPS for Legacy Pullmore Steam. Pressing the down arrow key gives us ACC for Accessory. PAS for Passenger Car. A command controlled passenger car would be something such as a Station Sound Diner. BDU for Breakdown Unit would be such as an E7B unit or an F7B unit with breakdown sounds. FRT is for freight sounds, such as an ethanol tank car or a Vision Line Pennsylvania stock car. Pressing the down arrow key again, we have a Sella. That's pretty obvious. And we have CRN for crane car. Crane car is both the TMCC crane car and the boom car. So assuming you assign the same ID number to the boom car that you do to the crane, as you activate the animation in the crane itself, the boom car will mimic all of those sounds through the sound system. Again, why this is important is because of the icons that appear on the menu for the ex expanded sounds. We're going to leave engine 76 as a crane car here for just a moment so I can show this to you. We hit info to exit the engine menu screen and you can see immediately the icons on the screen change. It shows us hook up and down, the secondary hook, the primary hook, 
the uh, front lights on, the front lights or the rear lights on, uh, outriggers, uh, tower com or crew talk, uh, sounds off, sounds on, and reset. So these icons are specific to a crane. We're going to go ahead and go back and we're going to change the type to an Acela. So you can see how the screen changes specific to the Acela. We go back and we have volume up, crew talk, RPMs up, volume down, sound shutdown, RPMs down, tower calm. We have an icon for turning the interior or the locomotive lights uh, off and on. That would be the cab lights. We've got left side door open, left side door close, engine reset, and on the right side of the remote we have right doors open and right doors closed. These icons are specific to the Acela and you'll notice the name at the top of the screen now says Acela. The same rules hold true for each different type that you can select under the engine menu screen. We can change, we can scroll through this all day long. We'll choose passenger car for a station sound diner. You'll notice that when you choose passenger car the control type comes up as TMCC and the sound comes up as rail sounds. That's because in version 1.3, to date, Lionel has not released any legacy equipped station sound diners. So it sets up the other variables for you. To exit the menu, we press info. And if you look at the touchpad, the icons are specific to the station sound diner. Volume up, announcements, uh, sounds on, volume down, sound off, the next station stop, tower calm, interior lights off, interior lights on, and engine reset. The great thing about choosing these different types is that you no longer have to remember the shortcuts. The icons display it for you. More so, when we get into the video that talks about using train link, by selecting these various different types of locomotives in the remote, it also changes the icons when you get into building your lash-ups. It also allows you to select these various different engine types from the train link menu. Again, that will be covered in a separate video. For now, it's extremely important that you understand why we would like you to program each specific locomotive in the locomotive menu based on its ID. Again, it's all about 8-bit versus 9-bit digital signal and the display or the icons that appear on the touchpad specific to each product. If you feel you've made an error in programming, it's very easy to go back and correct it. You can go into the engine menu screen by pressing info, scrolling through each individual tab, and changing the setting. The control type, and the sounds that it is equipped with. In the event that you're not happy with any of those options and perhaps you've assigned an engine number and set up the menu for something that you're going to change the ID number on, you can simply clear it from the remote again by pressing clear. It'll confirm whether you want to clear everything about engine 76. To get out of the screen you can press no or pushing clear again, you can press yes to clear all of the data. And now when we go back to engine 76, it says we need to assign the name, the control type is diesel, it's cab one, and there's no sounds. When we exit this screen, it simply comes up in Lionel cab one mode. It no longer displays UP Challenger 3976. This concludes this instructional video on why it is important to program into the remote each specific locomotive you have on your railroad. We hope that in the long run this will enhance your operating experience and improve your performance on your railroad. If you have any questions about programming your specific locomotives individually in your remote, please feel free to contact Lionel Customer Service at the number on the bottom of the screen.